A new documentary is taking aim at Pink Floyd's Roger Waters and his BDS movement against Israel. And I-24 culture correspondent Maya Margit interviewed the director of Wish You Weren't Here. He's among the top grossing musicians in the world, a co-founder of Pink Floyd, one of the most influential and popular rock bands in musical history. More recently, Roger Waters has become known as a spokesman for the Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions, or BDS movement, targeting Israel. And now Waters is the subject of a new movie by best-selling author and filmmaker Ian Halperin. The documentary film is called Wish You Weren't Here, and it's looking to expose the dark side of the former Pink Floyd frontman. Being the son of a Holocaust survivor, I, I, I almost fell off my chair that somebody was able to be out on tour and during his tour dress up in a Nazi uniform and have pigs floating around with the Star of David emblazoned on it and make all these uh, nefarious statements against uh, the state of Israel and against the Jewish people. Halperin has directed many films on famous musicians, Kurt Cobain, Michael Jackson and Lady Gaga. But now he's shining the spotlight on Waters, who's called Israel an apartheid state and even compared it to Nazi Germany. In this conflict, that means ending Israel's occupation, colonization, ethnic cleansing, and the denial of the right to self-determination. So what Roger Waters is spewing goes much far beyond freedom of expression. It's an ingrained hatred towards the Jewish people in Israel. And this is not me saying this. This, this is the world's leading experts who appear in my film. Some of those interviewed include the president of the World Jewish Congress, Ronald Lauder, veteran music executive, David Renzer, and members of the Israeli parliament. Also, famous radio talk show host, Howard Stern, who's come out vociferously against Waters. And it bugs the out of Roger Waters. He can't deal with it. He's writing letters to Bon Jovi. Don't go there. It's a terrible place. Where do you want the Jews to go, Roger? Where do you want them to go? The film portrays the musician's activism as going well beyond healthy criticism of Israel. In fact, according to Halperin, it's an obsession that reaches back decades. Musicians who have played with Waters, and shockingly, they told me he's, uh, Roger Waters has been like cracking Jewish jokes for the last 20 years before he even called for the boycott. But Halperin argues the film is not just about tearing down Waters or BDS supporters, but about presenting both sides of the story. Though his past documentaries have aired in over 160 countries, Halperin says he's been facing an uphill battle to distribute this particular film. Ultimately, Halperin is hoping to give those willing to listen an education in contemporary anti-Semitism. And I'm hoping, by doing all these interviews, I'm hoping that all the corporate sponsors wake up and decide to take action against this man who is perpetrating hatred toward the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Halperin believes the final cut of his film will be another brick in the wall shielding against anti-Semitism. Maya Margit, I-24 News. What a great story and a great interview. And, and, you know, I love the fact this guy's been known for doing so many things, but this one seems to be like a, a personal crowning moment for him. I agree. I think this story is very personal for him. And that's what he said. He said he's the son of a Holocaust survivor. And to see this kind of Nazi or fascist imagery appear on stage is very difficult, he said, for him and for others as well in the Jewish community, especially when it's combined with, you know, stars of David appearing on pigs and this very kind of classic anti-Semitic imagery, mm -hmm. uh, which Roger Waters says he's using to, you know, to criticize Israeli policies towards the Palestinian. Roger Waters has said numerous times he denies being an anti-Semite. He says he's just criticizing Israeli policy. But he's like taking it so far. I mean, and it takes a lot of guts for this guy. I mean, he's, you know, he's obviously very successful as a writer and documentary maker, but like he's throwing it back in his face because it's like Roger Waters has been such a bully with so many bands that he's like not even responding to this like he's that's right and kind of cowardly it's kind of funny because you know with Radiohead which uh, the band you recently performed here in Tel Aviv maybe a few weeks ago and Roger Waters was trying to contact them for many times and he was writing articles online and publishing things and saying why isn't Roger why isn't Radiohead ready to respond to me but now Roger Waters is not responding to the media outlets or to this filmmaker uh, Ian Halpern told me he tried to get a hold of him for a response he 
wasn't able to. So he was in, in the film. He includes footage that he was able to find at the UN uh, from other public uh, events where he speaks about Israel. Well, it's ironic, you know. It's like he complains about everyone else not responding, yet he's not responding, and this is this is about him. And the other interesting thing is, is Despite all of uh, Halpern's experience, he's having issues getting distribution, you were saying. That's right. He told me he doesn't have a specific date yet for the release. It's going to be at the end of August or early September. But he said that with this film, unlike previous films, which he has managed to screen in over 150 countries, uh, he said that this film is more controversial, so a lot of media outlets are refusing to you know, air it. He said there's a lot more resistance to this film because of the topic, because it's controversial, because it's about BDS. And not, and and not being politically correct. You that's know? right. It's, uh, it's a tough topic. Listen, it's it's not something that everyone wants to air. And sometimes, you know, the fact like even with all of these roadblocks, people are talking about it. So it actually becomes something that that people are addressing and talking about it, and you know that makes it newsworthy. So yes, that's right. It's very are... gutsy, and I think in the fact that he's interviewing real people, it's not just an opinion that he's throwing out there. He actually did the journalistic work for this documentary as well. He traveled to Israel. He interviewed uh, members of parliament. He interviewed Arab Israeli members here. He interviewed Muslim scholars, uh, different people from not outside of the Jewish community as well, to ask uh, to discuss Roger Waters and why he is so vehemently obsessed with Israel and that he has taken on this uh, cause. Right. Yeah. Well, more to come. Great report and great interview. Very cool that we have technology that we could do this and not physically be in the same places. <laughs> exactly.